when we started off the women's 3K, we had a, a classic showdown between a pure ice skater and a pure inline skater, or, a, or an inline origin story, and this is the same case. Justin Stelly, you see now on the outer lane of the track on the left side of your screen. Really one of the top U.S. performing inline skaters. He still competes. He still competes in races. He has won medals at the Inline World Championships. He is a multiple-time winner of the Pro NSC Championships. That's an inline competition that was started by Joey Mantia, who we'll see later. Uh, and we'll see a real difference in technique between these two skaters. How do you pace yourself in the 12-and-a-half lap race here? How do you know that you have to save energy for the for the closing laps? Well, it, the 5,000, I think, probably hurts worse than any other race in speed skating. 1,500 meters, you, 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 it's the closest you'll feel to, to dying. But this race, you <laughs> get to agony about eight laps in, and you still have four more laps to go. From a technical standpoint, we break it down into three parts. First four laps, middle four, and last four. The great Dutch speed skater Urban Winnemar said you go out the first four laps, you can't, you shouldn't feel a thing. Second four laps, you want to build the corners. Last four laps, you just go like crazy and you hope someone can, can reach down and push you around this track that last two laps of the race. Quinn uh, leading this pair at the moment. Justin Sally competed four years ago at the Olympic Trials as well uh, and really didn't have much time on the ice. He'd been bouncing, bouncing back and forth between inlines and ice, came out, skated a performance he really wasn't happy with, and he made a commitment. He said, if I'm going to go out there and do this, I want to make sure I'm doing it right. So last year he's been uh, really focusing, making sure he's getting enough time on the ice, not just on the wheels, so that he's strong and competing well out here. Stelly is from uh, Louisiana, southern Louisiana, and when uh, Hurricane Katrina, that awful event came through that area in 2005. Uh, his neighborhood, about two hours west of New Orleans, uh, did not have too much uh, damage. But then in 2016, a flood devastated that area and destroyed his grandmother's house. So he's seen the, the natural tragedies that have occurred in that part of the country over the last few years. We'll get a good look at this backstretch here. Justin Stelly's got a chance to chase and, and get a draft there from Ian Quinn, who's moving over to the outside lane. Ian Quinn, I spoke with the trainer for the U.S. team, BK Renderfresh, asked him how everybody was looking. Quinn was suffering from a little bit of food poison this weekend. We had another skater we'll, we'll see later on. There's a couple guys. It looks like something's going around. People have a little bit of stomach bug. He said he's back 100%. And he looks like he's skating pretty well. So I think uh, he's, he's able to shake it off, get back out here. And you want to have everything you can for this 5,000 meter, 12 and a half lap race. Quinn is 24 years old, started skating when he was eight. But he also competed in uh, cross country and track growing up. And he raced at the short track trials in 2014, didn't make the team. So he thought long track would be better because of that distance running in his background. And the better, or uh, the longer the race goes, the better Ian Quinn is. He's starting to show, put a little bit of distance between himself and Stelly, and he's still looking really strong. Short track races, the longest race is a 1,500 meter that they'll skate at the Olympics, and that's just such a short event, two minutes. This race, it's gonna be about, you just under, you know, you're aiming for 6.30. 6.30 would be fantastic out here. If anyone's able to do that time, that would be a very strong race. And he, he knows what those lap times are he has to do to get out there, and that's really what he's gonna be shooting for. What about technique, short track versus long track in a 5,000 meter race? Well, the biggest advantage, and you can really actually start to see it here, short track skaters have incredible turns. They're so strong in the turns, they set the hip and they never move. So it looks almost like this rock solid mass they're pushing against. If we get a look at Steli, you know, he's starting to slow down a little bit. He's starting to really feel the, that pain. Those hips will start to bounce around. And the short trackers, they just never do that. That's the one big advantage you can see here. If you were to draw a line right through Ian Quinn's hips, it would just sort of stay in one place in those corners. If you were to draw a line across your screen, don't do it at home, the high def TV is not cheap. <laughs> it just never moves. It's like one straight line. That means every push, he's pushing against his whole body weight, which accelerates you through the corners. 31-2-2, the last lap for Quinn. 34-8-6 for Stelly. 31-2 is a very strong, strong time for this track. We saw with the women in the 3K, Times are just not as fast as we thought we'd see at Olympic trials. But Quinn is doing a great job of keeping his tempo up. We saw in the women's, 
If you had a faster tempo, the number of strokes per lap, you are oftentimes doing better. If you had a slower tempo, you're underperforming your personal best. And again, this ice, we called it new collar ice because it's at sea level. <laughs> so not like those rinks at altitude where you get the really fast times. This part of the race is just, just brutal on the body. You can see in Quinn's face, he's starting to grit his teeth. He's gonna come around here on two laps to go. And at this point, everything hurts on you. When we measure lactic acid, we measure all of these physiological traits in speed skating. 5,000 meters is the highest lactic acid in speed skating and among the highest lactic acids you see in any sport that anyone competes in all across the world. Quinn, 31.57 the last lap. Stelly, 34.38 well off the pace. Quinn trying to catch Edwin Park, who is the leader after four pairs at 648.13 unofficially. There's the bell. Quinn is well, well ahead of the time set by Park, something like 13 seconds yeah. in that range. So he'll certainly take the lead. The best skaters in America still yet to come. Is this going to be good enough to hold up, though? You know, I, my guess is no, it's not, but I think this is a fantastic race. This race is exceeding any expectations I had for Ian Quinn going into this, into this trials. Win, lose, or draw, he's got to feel happy coming out of this race. And here he comes to the finish. Ian Quinn, the 24-year-old, completing his run at 5,000 meters, 633.69. He, by a big margin, is the new leader. You can see, you see the gap there that Ian Quinn put on Justin Stelly, and that was all in really the last eight laps. Once you get out of the screen, you know, that gap, you, you think it's not very much, and all of a sudden you look again, and it's just a, it's a half lap there. It was a hard race for Stelly. Ian Quinn was only five seconds off his personal best time, which was set at the Calgary Oval or the Salt Lake City Oval, the very fast ovals. He's got to feel thrilled about that time. Ian Quinn, your new leader in the men's 5,000-meter race in Milwaukee.